Hey guys, in today's video I'll be giving you some advice on how to be more productive after school. Throughout most of the video I'll be going over things you can do when you're at home or at your main workspace, but before you even get there you can try step zero, which is to make the most of your commute or travel time. I have another video with some more details about this which I'll link in the cards right now and in the description below, but you could consider reading a book or listening to an audiobook or lecture while you're on the bus or the train or the subway or however you get home from school. As soon as you get home before you get started on your schoolwork, one great thing to do is to relax and recharge for a little bit. I recommend you set up a relaxation routine instead of necessarily choosing different things every day. The reason a routine works really great for your productivity is you don't have to think about the next steps and you don't necessarily have to use willpower to come up with a plan or try to make yourself do it because once you do the routine often enough it just becomes habit and you pretty much do it on autopilot. Here are some ideas of what you might want to include in that relaxation period. One option is to do some light physical activity like stretching or exercises that aren't too intense. Also have some snacks, drink water, just intake all those things that your body needs. If you'd like some snack ideas, I will have another video about that linked in the cards and description. If you really do need a quick nap, the time interval shown to be the most effective generally is about 20 minutes because that works best to avoid feeling drowsy while also actually getting a significant enough amount of rest. You could also just take a break for 15 to 30 minutes, do something that doesn't require much mental energy, like cleaning and organizing your space or reading a book that you want to read for fun. Just make sure this doesn't get dragged out too long for like an hour or anything. After you have recharged your batteries with a bit of a break, start your work period by setting up your to-do list in the most efficient manner to help you actually get all of that stuff done. I recommend that you keep track of your homework and assignments as they are told to you in class, but if you haven't done that yet, it's all good. Check your Google Classroom or teacher's websites or anything and write all of that down. Also brain dump the other tasks that you need to get done, like if you're working on college apps or if you need to review for a test that's coming up in the next week. Now that you've got this giant list in front of you, you need to figure out how to actually get all of that completed. One method that I find really works for me is to schedule my time. Of course, this might not work for everyone, especially if you're the kind of person who tends to like to fight against deadlines. The way time scheduling works is first you estimate how long each task will take you, and then on an hourly schedule, write in what you want to get done each hour. I have a more detailed video about time blocking, which once again, I will link in the cards and description. One tip I have related to time blocking is if you have a lot of really small tasks that take less than five minutes each, like maybe you need to send off an email or open a letter, just combine them all and do them all in one giant chunk. It's really satisfying to just get rid of all these nagging tasks and check off the boxes, and that can motivate you to keep going and being productive and checking off those task boxes as you move forward. Once you've gotten all of those out of the way, it's time to start working on the things that are more time consuming and harder to get through. Your first priority should definitely be the things that are the most important and the most urgent. However, there are two possible ways to transition from writing your to-do list into actually working, and you can just pick them depending on your mood and energy level for the day. One option is to start with the hardest task. If you feel really energetic and pumped and ready to go, just get the hard things out of the way first so you don't have to worry about them later when you might be more tired. Or if you're just really not feeling up to it, there might be that one assignment that you know will be really easy, or maybe there's something that you really want to do. So get started with that first and maybe doing that task and getting into the workflow will help make it more easy for you to transition into the next ones, which might be more difficult. You might also want to reflect on the way you generally feel at different times of day. Maybe you work best in the early afternoon, maybe you get really tired close to dinner time, maybe you're the kind of person who works the best at 11 p.m. or 2 a.m. Not that I recommend staying up till 2 a.m., but know yourself, know your circadian rhythms, and take advantage of those best and worst times to get your 
most creative work done or most difficult work done at the times where you'll be the most effective. Alrighty, so that's all well and good. You've got this giant to-do list and a way to manage it. But the hardest part is often just motivating yourself to go do these things. And there is no perfect method, honestly. It just takes a lot of willpower and buckling down to get the work done. But here are a few tricks you can use to make yourself get these things done without too much mental pain. First of all, the hardest part is often just getting yourself started. Normally when I start a task, I eventually get into the workflow and I want to keep going. So the first two minutes are the hardest part to get myself through. One way you can counteract this effect is to just promise yourself, oh, I only have to do this for two minutes. And if I don't want to keep going, maybe I'll just stop. But usually you won't want to stop, but you know, you can trick yourself into thinking you won't be doing that much work, but you can fool yourself into getting it done. You could also give yourself rewards. I know this cool thing that people post on Pinterest all the time is like putting gummy bears to make yourself read the next paragraph. It doesn't necessarily have to be food or like a physical thing either. Maybe just for every chapter I finish questions for, I'll get to waste time on Instagram for five minutes. And this ties into another thing that would be helpful for you to do, which is taking breaks. You can use the breaks as a reward to motivate yourself to keep going. You can use the time period as a way to make yourself get started. Like, oh, I only have to work for 25 minutes and then I'll get to stop. And taking breaks is really important for your productivity too. Just like you needed to recharge at the beginning of your work period after the school day, you also need to take smaller breaks to rest and recharge while you're working. One method that's really popular is the Pomodoro method, which is 25 minutes of work followed by five minutes of break. You could also consider something like 50 to 10 minutes of break, which is what I usually do. And lastly, just make sure you avoid distractions. One of the big ones is social media. So turn off notifications, put your phone on silent and do not disturb and throw it across the room. Keep your water bottle or snacks close by if you feel like you might want to get up to use those. I also know that sometimes you remember something all of a sudden and you want to go Google that question you just thought of or get that task done that you just remembered that you had to do, but don't interrupt your workflow. Just have a little post-it note or sheet of paper nearby and write that down to get done later. If you'd like more advice on how to streamline your workspace to avoid distractions and make it more productive, I'll have a video about that linked once again in the cards and the description. Lastly, one great thing to do at the end of the day is to prepare yourself for the next day. After you're finished with whichever papers you're working with, just put them back where they're supposed to go and then pack up your backpack so that in the morning you don't have to be all frazzled trying to get everything together and you might not even remember where you've put everything after you are done working with it. So do your future self a favor and get that all packed up after you're done working after this very productive after school study and work session. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you have other tips you'd like to share with people, please put them in the comments so we can all benefit from that. I upload new videos every Monday, and my Instagram where I post photos of my notes and bullet journal is at studyquill. See you next time!